Have you ever wondered what goes on in the mind of a serial killer? A chilling question, isn't it? Yet it's one that has captivated us for centuries. We're drawn to the abyss, to the dark corners of the human psyche, to the labyrinthine minds of those whose actions defy our understanding of morality and humanity. These individuals, these serial killers, they're more than just subjects of morbid curiosity. They're a mirror held up to society, reflecting our deepest, darkest fears and the monsters that lurk within us. They embody the extremes of human nature, the very worst that humanity can be. And yet, we can't look away. We're fascinated, horrified, and strangely captivated by their stories. This fascination has permeated popular culture, particularly in the realm of film. Cinema has a long history of exploring the minds of these enigmatic individuals, delving deep into their motivations, their pathologies, and their twisted perceptions of the world. From the infamous Hannibal Lecter to the anonymous John Doe, from the affluent Patrick Bateman to the scent-obsessed murderer in perfume, these characters have become iconic, their stories etched into our collective consciousness. Through their narratives, these films allow us to explore these dark territories from a safe distance. They provide a window into the minds of these killers, giving us a taste of their twisted worldviews without subjecting us to their horrific deeds. They blur the line between the monstrous and the human, challenging our perceptions of good and evil, sanity and madness. But let's not forget, these are not just stories. They're reflections of real-world horrors, of real people who've committed unspeakable acts. They're a stark reminder of the darkness that lurks in the hearts of some, a darkness that can manifest in the most horrifying ways. As we delve into the chilling world of these films, prepare yourself to explore the darkest corners of the human psyche. Brace yourself, for we're about to embark on a journey into the mind of the psychopath, a journey that's as fascinating as it is terrifying. Kicking off our exploration is the infamous Buffalo Bill in The Silence of the Lambs, followed by the biblically inspired killer in C7N. In The Silence of the Lambs, we are introduced to Buffalo Bill, a killer who prefers to skin his victims and wear them as a mask. But the real apex predator of this narrative is Dr. Hannibal Lecter, a former psychiatrist turned cannibalistic serial killer. Lecter, while mostly incarcerated, exudes an air of chilling charm and intellect that is as captivating as it is terrifying. His complex relationship with FBI trainee Clarice Starling adds another layer of intrigue to this macabre but mesmerizing tale. The film explores the depths of human depravity and the perverse fascination we have with those who dwell in it. Moving on to CU7, we delve into a world of deadly sins and divine retribution. The unnamed city serves as a grim backdrop to this tale of a biblically inspired killer known only as John Doe. The city itself is as much a character in the movie as the detectives and the killer. It's a place where we project our darkest fears, our most gruesome horrors. John Doe is a meticulous murderer, using each of the seven deadly sins as a blueprint for his killings. His methodical, almost ritualistic approach is a stark contrast to the chaotic world around him. This film is not just about the pursuit of a serial killer, but about the moral decay of society and the price of indifference. While these two films are vastly different in their approach, they both offer a chilling insight into the minds of their respective killers. Buffalo Bill and John Doe, despite their monstrous actions, are depicted with a degree of complexity that makes them not just villains, but characters with depth and a twisted sense of purpose. They are not merely mindless monsters, but individuals shaped by their circumstances and twisted ideologies. These two films set the bar high for the serial killer genre, capturing audiences with their complex killers and gripping narratives. Next, we dive into the mind of a wealthy executive hiding a violent alter ego in American Psycho and a scent-obsessed murderer in Perfume, the story of a murderer. The year 2000 brought us American Psycho, a chilling tale of a Wall Street hotshot named Patrick Bateman. Behind his polished exterior, Bateman harbors a psychopathic, alter ego. His violent and hedonistic fantasies are masked by a facade of wealth and power, allowing him to seamlessly blend into the upper echelons of society. The film peels back the layers of Bateman's disturbing duality, revealing a man consumed by his darkest desires. It's a chilling exploration of how unchecked wealth and privilege can provide a perfect smokescreen for a killer. Six years later, we were introduced to a different kind of monster in Perfume, the story of a murderer. 
This film presents a murderer with a peculiar obsession, scent. Set in 18th century France, the film follows Jean-Baptiste Grenouille, a man born with an extraordinary sense of smell. His obsession with capturing the perfect scent leads him down a dark path of murder as he begins to kill young women to distill their essence. The film is a haunting portrayal of a man driven by a desire so powerful it pushes him to commit the most heinous crimes. While American Psycho and Perfume, the story of a murderer, are vastly different, they share a common thread, killers driven by obsession. Bateman's obsession with status and power and Grenouille's obsession with scent are the driving forces behind their murderous rampages. These characters are not driven by necessity or survival, but by an insatiable desire to fulfill their twisted fantasies. These films continue to push the boundaries of the genre, presenting killers driven by obsession and status. It's a terrifying thought that beneath the veneer of success or an eccentric hobby, there could lurk a killer. These movies remind us that sometimes the most frightening monsters are not those that lurk in the shadows, but those that walk among us hidden in plain sight. These films continue to push the boundaries of the genre, presenting killers driven by obsession and status. From the notorious cold case of Zodiac to the horrific honeymoon murders and the postcard killings, we'll explore a variety of chilling narratives. In the late 60s, the San Francisco Bay Area was held in the grip of fear by the elusive Zodiac killer. The 2007 film Zodiac delves into this notorious cold case, offering a chilling look at a killer who left behind cryptic clues in a city living in terror. Fast forward a year to The Chaser, where a former policeman becomes embroiled in a race against time when one of his women goes missing. This South Korean thriller shows a different side to the serial killer genre, with a gritty and visceral portrayal of a desperate man on the hunt for a sadistic killer. In 2009's Mother, the narrative shifts to the viewpoint of a mother determined to clear her son's name after he is framed for a horrific murder. This South Korean drama thriller explores the lengths a mother will go to in the pursuit of justice and the chilling reality that the real killer is still at large. In I Saw the Devil, a detective descends into a personal hell as he locates and tortures the serial killer who ended his pregnant fiancé's life. This 2010 South Korean action horror film presents a brutal and unflinching look at revenge, questioning the line between justice and vengeance. Moving on to the postcard killings released in 2020. This film follows a New York detective who, after the murder of his daughter while on her honeymoon in London, teams up with a Scandinavian journalist to investigate a string of similar killings across Europe. As the pair delve deeper into the mystery, they uncover a horrifying pattern of honeymoon murders, each announced by a postcard sent to a local journalist. These films offer a wide range of narratives, each presenting their own terrifying take on the mind of a killer. In our journey through these films, we've encountered a variety of horrifying serial killers, each unique in their motivations and methods. From the skin-wearing Buffalo Bill in The Silence of the Lambs to the biblically-inspired John Doe in C7 Ento, these characters have given us a chilling insight into the darkest corners of the human mind. We've delved into the hedonistic fantasies of Patrick Bateman in American Psycho and explored the disturbing obsessions of a scent-capturing murderer in Perfume, the story of a murderer. We followed the infamous Zodiac Killer's cold case and experienced the frantic desperation of a mother searching for her son's accuser in Mother. The unsettling narratives continued with I Saw the Devil, where a detective tortures his fiancé's killer and confession of murder, which saw a detective and a victim's mother on a hunt for a self-proclaimed killer. In Frozen Ground, we witnessed the pursuit of justice for the victims of Robert Hansen, and in Marshland, we delved into a web of secrets and lies in the deep south of Spain. Memoir of a Murderer offered a unique perspective, with a former serial killer battling Alzheimer's to protect his daughter, and finally, the postcard killings took us on a detective's heartbreaking journey to investigate his daughter's murder. These films have not only showcased a variety of unique serial killers, but also highlighted the intriguing narratives that they inspire. They have shown us the lengths that some will go to in the pursuit of justice, the depths of depravity that others will sink to, and the shocking capacity for evil that can exist within the human psyche. While these films offer a chilling look into the minds of serial killers, 
They also serve as a grim reminder of the dark depths of the human psyche. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the macabre world of serial killer cinema.